Inji Indiveni. And I was born in Corby. <laughs> well, I was actually born in Stanion at my granny's house, which was just a couple of miles away. Yeah. And I've lived in Corby and I'm 77. <laughs> uh, John Griffin. Eileen Griffin. From, from a little place called Ballyhay, County Cork. Aye. I'm Mary Ann McFadgen. I'm from Motherwell and Lanarkshire, Scotland, originally. I came down to Corby in 1963. I took up poetry when I was um, diagnosed with Parkinson, and I decided not to let it beat me, so I keep my brain alert by writing. John Rail, County Cork. And we met in Ireland. In. Over here. Yeah, yeah. And in, <coughs> sorry. In, in the dance hall, we met in the dance hall in Ballyhea. Paulette Donaghy, and I'm from Glasgow originally. Yeah. yeah. Nice. But we've, we were married in Glasgow and then we moved to Germany and we stayed there for 15 years and my three children were born there. And then we came back and settled in Corby. Yeah. My husband was a head teacher okay. in school across the way. Yeah. yeah. My name is Rita Lamb. It was Bastin when I was young. And I come from um, Devon. Lived in three different villages. And um, I was actually born near Salisbury. Okay, yeah. Near Stonehenge because my dad was, he was in the army. And so he had married quarters yeah. for doing work on Stonehenge. And then when his time was up, we went back down to Devon because that's where he came from at Broadcliffe. I was Mary McGrath, but now I'm Mary Lisk. But I come used to live in Tipperary, County Tipperary, Carrick and Shaw. My dad was a fisherman, my uncle were fishermen. And over 50 years ago, a friend of theirs got drowned. I don't know if you know what the All Island is in Ireland. It's like the football here, but hurling. Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And a friend of theirs went out. He had eight daughters and one son, this man. Jim, Jim Sullivan was his name. And he went out on the All Island Day fishing and he got drowned. Him and his son got drowned. Something happened that the dogs overturned the boat yeah. and they drowned. So they dragged the river for him. So that's when the river that got the boats, a man in each side, two men in one cart and two men in the other. And they had bar wire and they dragged the bottom of the river with the bar wire and that's they got the bodies that way and that's the way river rescue started. Pat Miller I come from Scotland originally and when I was two years of age my father and the family all came down from Scotland to Corby to go to Stuart and Lloyd's you know it was the steelworks mm. yeah. Colin Underwood from Desborough. Brian Kelly and when were you born? December 1943. Cool. And uh, whereabouts were you born? And a place in Northern Ireland. Some people call it Derry. Other people call it London Derry. I'm Clarence Bilton Lisk, L-I-S-K. I'm from Colombo in Ceylon, or Sri Lanka, as they call it, yeah. I was born in John Street, Greenock, Scotland. I was born near the harbour. And the, the main thing in my head when I look back is our freedom. Mm. I mean, we lived in a country you could go for hours and nobody questioned you. Your mum said, where are you going? Yeah. And children just ran everywhere. There was no fear. Yeah. You mm. did not think there was a mad boogeyman around a tree anywhere. Yeah. We played and you could drink the water out of the streams because it was natural water. And then you had fall down apples in the lanes and things like that, you know. It was a wonderful world years ago. We lived on a main road, mm -hmm. and there was a, a, it was a bog, if you know what a bog is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And between the bog and the road, there was a river, the River Shore. Yeah. You might have heard of it, it's a good river. And that, and that was where we used to play in the bog, or we'd go up Tommy Ryan's field, and Josie, Josie Ryan would come up the avenue with the Aston cart and she'd pour the milk from the churns into your jug and things like that. Uh, and my grandmother um, 
on my father's side, uh, when De Valera was on the run, she washed his shirt. Would you believe oh, that? Really? Yeah. That's a story. Yeah, she washed his shirt, De Valera's shirt. And that, wow. Yeah. Uh, she always talk about it, you know, she said, when they were on the run, she said, I washed the, the shirts and that. Lots went on. There was another chap called Neddy Riley, lived on our road. He was a lovely man. And um, he was t tortured by the IRA as, yeah. as well, because they thought he was, you know, an informer or whatever. But he wasn't. He was just a nice, quiet man. Never had any children or anything like that. But Carrick, there's a lot of there's a lot of information in Carrick and that. You know. yeah. Yes, there was electricity, but there was no uh, no heated water. There was no inside toilets. Nothing like that. We went out to the yard and went to the toilet. You know, it was a flush toilet, but it was the bottom of the yard. And uh, then we've uh, you know we went originally when I was a very small baby. We stayed with my grandmother. And it's sometimes there was somebody, my, my grandmother would say to my mother, take that boy home because he doesn't know who his mother is. Because mm -hmm. he spends more time with her. Growing up in Glasgow, I could tell you lots actually. <laughs> Might not be quite suitable. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. And then we had a massive garden and yeah. then we used to grow potatoes and things like that, you know. Yeah. Um, we lived just across the street. We lived in a single end. Yeah. There were six of us in one room, no toilets, nothing. And we had to go across the street to my granny's flat. She lived across the street because she had a toilet on her landing. Yeah. So that was posh. So that's, we had no toilets or anything. But anyway, we used to go up to the pub. My sisters and I, we had a jug to get my grandpa's beer. <laughs> and I was only a wee tiny thing, you know. And... Just things like that, you know. And then my granny came to stay with us when we moved to the north of Glasgow. From there, we'd moved to a three-bedroomed house with a garden and a bathroom. We just thought it was heaven. Yeah. And my granny came to stay with us for a while. And she used to like to put on a wee bit on the horses, you see. So I was about seven then. And I used to have to cross fields because we were right out in the middle of nowhere. Cross fields to get to the, the bookies. And I'd stand outside where lying in money, ask the uh, first man that came along, will you go and put that on for my granny, please? Ah, and you were gambling and going yeah. to the pub at <laughs> <laughs> You certainly couldn't do things like that now. I was born in 1944. 1944, just yeah. towards the end of the Second yeah. World War. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And of course my mum, uh, I was born at my granny's house. Yeah. And then we lived in kind of lodgings on Corby Road. Uh, with this, we used to call her Gran, and there was Mum and Dad, and me, Betty, and Joe. Yeah. Yeah. And then they built houses, new houses, you know, the prefab houses. Yeah. And we moved into one of them. Yeah. 11, 11 children in the two room in kitchen. Wow. Uh, and what, 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 did you, what did you do for um, entertainment as children? What games did you play? Did oh, we had. Uh, Spend the bottle when you used to say yes and the dance and things like that. <laughs> that's a classic, yeah. I think that's one of the And uh, being Scottish, we had to run out the street, the street and shout, I'm my mom's big bubbly wing. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and a whole lot of stupid things. Yeah, yeah. And my mother, the parents used to come out and skip ropes with us and yeah, all different yeah. things and kick the can and I had a lovely childhood, you know. Yeah. I've been on the farm, we got a little extra allowance. Ah, okay, yeah. But yeah. I wouldn't say there was a lot of that because in the village, people used to swap. You know, somebody, if he had a reputation for growing tomatoes, he'd probably swap them for somebody who grew a lot of t potatoes. Yeah. Or if they kept chickens, they would mop eggs. Because yeah. uh, I always remember we, the back door was never locked and uh, we had a basket of mushrooms put on the table and it never did find out where they came from. Really? Yeah. yeah. But there was uh, stuff available through. I well, they used to go picking in the summer, blackcurrants, mm -hmm. uh, gooseberries, um, I think that was it. Yeah. Of course, uh, oh, and we got plums as well. The same person used to bring plums when they were in season. Uh, well, I wouldn't say we starved, because we had chickens as well. I was five, so it was 51. Mm -hmm. We moved to the north end of Glasgow. And we, 
it was just magic there because there was a farm right across the road and it was just fields and there was a lot of children in our street and trees, we lived up trees mm -hmm. for yeah. years, you know. We used to, it was fantastic. Well, I went to a school, the uh, Long Tower we called it as, but its proper name was St Columbus Boys School. It was a primary school and we had a thousand children at one school and they were all primary school kids. And uh, we had a concrete yard. I think it's in days gone by, it was a market or something. But we had a concrete yard and we had toilets at the bottom end of the concrete yard. So everybody had to come out of the classrooms and walk down to the toilets. And uh, we didn't have a football team. We never had a swimming team. We, we, we had a, a very basic education. You were taught to read and write and sent out to look for work. Horrible nuns they were. I don't know, you probably don't know what they looked like. They looked like penguins, and that, but they were horrible. They were. Um, how, 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 did you, how did you come in contact with the nuns? Because when you're, um, because you're, we're Catholics, we had to go to a Catholic school because there was no other schools, was there? Yeah. Until you're a certain age, boys and girls went to the same school. And then when the boys reached, uh, when, once they made the first communion, they went up to the the green school which was a school for the boys which was um one priest but they look like priests uh, I, I can't try and think of the name what they call him now but my brother who was left-handed they nearly killed him the monks the monks christian brothers that's what they oh, called right, them yeah, christian yeah. Bro brothers yeah christy was left-handed and yeah. because he was left-handed he was scared they used to murder him at school he came home from school one day and the sleeve was gone from his shirt and his coat where they were pulling him to make him right hand. But he, he's still left handed today. Yeah. And, and yeah. right was really right nice. For me but till we had to come back to uh, yeah. Desborough. And I, by then, everybody I knew before I went, they'd grown up and they were different. And I absolutely hated it, you know. Mm. That was only from September to April, but it seemed like a year. And there was a master there I wanted to kill every time I was in his class, you know. Because he was a bully, he really was. Mm. He threw things, he threw, slapped around the head and that. He was really... Yeah. And that was the 50s, yeah. not the 20s. Yeah, as I say, I wished him dead every time I had to go into his class. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. but he was all... <laughs> Everybody left at 15. Yeah, yeah. 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 Unless you went to do it about... Well, they didn't have any A-levels and that, I don't think. Well, not in Sammy Lloyd's school, perhaps yeah. at the grammar school. The school was, and it was miles away, we had to walk a lot away, but um, no, it was okay. And then we moved to, it was in Lamb Hill, and then we moved to one that was built in Milton, which was a lot nearer for us then, you know. But yeah. Yeah. The Irish are very superstitious, well, very what, much so. What were some of the superstitions you remember from your childhood? Well, oh, sort of thing, don't, don't walk under the ladder, oh, yeah. and um, I forget where it's. And one magpie is bad luck. Magpie yeah. bad luck. Yeah, that's right. Lots of things. Can't think of them all just now. But yeah, everything yeah. was, you know, we had to, you know, it yeah. was quite strange. Now we are older, like you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we still think of things like that when we see, like we see a magpie. We still oh, yeah. think, oh, I want to see two. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I look, when I see one, I look for the second one. Yeah. Make sure there's two. Always asking where's your mate. Yeah. <laughs> My mum died at 27 and my dad died at 33. He came out every second week to visit us. My grandmother took us on. Mm -hmm. But for a while, he had to put us into Smiling Home. Three-year-old, mm -hmm. I could tell you some stories. <laughs> yeah. They were horrific. They were three-year-old, polish round your bed, make your bed. And my brother was a bedwetter, and he was ritually smart in front of every day for waiting the bed. One night they locked him in the, in the toilets, and I went, got out of my bed and let him out. To, well, you know in the countryside, it's scary trees and that. Yeah. They were howling, they was crying. So I let him out of the bed. And the next day, him and I were in a, on, kneeling on a wooden floor with your hands in your head. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> For a bit, I don't know how long. There's no Catholic school when you got to 11. 
we had to go to non-Catholic school, which everybody in Corby was the same. We had to walk, do you know Corby? A little bit. Yeah, yeah, we had to walk down Occupation Road. And this sounds bad, but all our friends, and I'm still friends with now, they used to say, oh, you're a Catholic cat. And they used to say, you're a proddy dog. <laughs> That was the same, we used to call across to one another like really? that. Oh yeah, yeah, all in good. And then I, I lived, I lived in 105 Rowlett Road. My mate, Violet, lived in 100 and 107. Betty lived in 109 and Gloria lived up the road. And we're all still friends. We see one another, phone everyone, every day we see. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, I had a lovely life. I think uh, we were not poor or not rich, so we, three boys, there's two brothers and I, we went to three different boarding schools, but I, was a, I wasn't a boarder, so we still had to pay the school money. Mm -hmm. So we had money to pay. Lots of people couldn't do, mm -hmm. afford that, but uh, it was Wesley College and my parents were Methodists, so uh, it was a Methodist school. Mm -hmm. uh, sports, it was lovely, cricket, rugby. Tennis, everything that was going, we managed to play it. We were youngsters, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, the the, the uprising is well documented. Yeah. The, the, the the troubles, as they call them, and they, they, they were well uprising. Uh, so, some bright spark decided that we would get something done about getting a, a united Ireland and get uh, uh, home rule and so on and so forth. If we started reacting right in the middle of the World War because the British were away fighting the Germans so they wouldn't have an army but that was a hell of a mistake because they had enough people to send over to Ireland and uh, it, the, the uprising didn't last very long but it's carried on and fits and starts here and there all about way long until in the end they decided to give them partial uh, independence which is when they got partition in Ireland. So six, part, six counties of Ireland now still uh, governed by the Crown, and the other thir uh, 26 counties are covered by the Republic of Ireland. And my, uh, like our husband was in the army for 29 years, he did the Irish army. My brother was in the Irish army for 20 years. My nephew was in the army, but he got come out because he was wounded in the Lebanon. He was badly wounded, yeah. and uh, um, and the friend he was with, they were on guard, and the, the chap went first, and he was shot, he was shot dead, and Mikey was behind him. He was badly wounded, and that he was lucky to survive. Yeah. Wow. Things that we shall be fighting against: brute force, bad faith, injustice, oppression and persecution, and against them I am certain that the right will prevail. Please stand by for the important government announcements. It's Sunday morning, and we're all sitting on the step outside ch chatting, got enough playing marbles, I think we were, and this lady from in this cul-de-sac we lived in was running around, all hands in the air, there's a wall, there's a wall, there's a wall, you know. Yeah. So I, I said to my friend, I think we've got to hide away or something, you know. I thought we'd better get into private hedge or something, so I thought yeah. somebody was coming for us. I was born in Durham Street, Greenock, Scotland. I was born near the harbour. The Germans were after the ships in the River Clyde from Greenock to Glasgow. All up the Clyde, it was, it was bad, night after night. I was sitting at the table with my mum and my dad and my three older brothers, Billy, John and Alec, 14. The sirens went and my dad took me up in his arms and we all ran into the shelter. It was a big shelter, two wooden benches. The banging went on and on. I had a little blanket and I put it over my head and pinned it down with my thumb. Later I put my hand down my back black fruit and dust. I don't know how long we were in the shelter. I was so frightened. It was a long time. Then we had voices. We were out of the shelter when we cleared the rubbish and the soup all over the place. 
We went into the house, all the walls were down. Old Granny's picture was hanging on a bit of wall, blowing in the breeze. There was not much left of the house, but my big pram and doll were saved, but covered in dust. Next thing we all standing at the church waiting to go to the hospital place. When we arrived there, there was plenty of bacon eggs, but didn't have any frying pans. My dad found garden shovels, and that's what they fried the bacon and eggs on. You could see them coming over all the time, you know. We used to stand in the garden and watch the spitfires go up, and everybody was going, get them, get them, you know. <laughs> um, and just over the big hill from where I lived was had an airport. Mm. So all the bombers would come up and all go over like that. And the ground would shake, you know, yeah. with all the bombers going over. Yeah. I mean, they, we were lucky at the outskirts. But what they did do, because when the Spitfires went and chased them, they would drop the bombs and go because the Spitfires were after them, you know. Mm. And um, this one dropped, but it called a landmine. It was landed at the back of our house. <gasps> If it really, but like there was a stream there, so it went into the stream, yeah. so it didn't explode. So if it had gone, I would have gone. But I mean, um, I stood there, and then all of a sudden, the front door coming on me, I went flying up the passage, you know. My mum was like, Where are you? You know, yeah. just throw the door down, just get in here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember getting my uh, Mickey Mouse gas mask changed for an adult. And uh, queues for furniture, you know. Everywhere we went, it was blackout. Pavement edges painted white. Uh, pavements marked with a yellow arrow where there was a stirrup pump available. Uh, aircraft going off because we were quite close to Desra Airfield. Mm -hmm. And around our area, there were pieces of road blocked off because bombs were stacked. And there was like a checkpoint. So we got parachutes for sale. You know, you the petitions. Yeah. And you could buy them. Well, I mean, it was like stiff nylon, you know. Yeah. And it was hilarious. We made clothes, that, you know, and big bows on your blouse here and. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, v day and V J day, we moved. Mm -hmm. We moved uh, a few miles up the road to a village called Buckton which was close to uh, about a mile away from a camp where there were German prisoners who used to play football with us, would you believe? Wow. Yes, they used to come. They were allowed a lot of freedom, actually, because they used to walk through the village in sometimes half dozens. Uniforms minus their uh, regimental, you know, flares and uh, badges and stuff like that, but... There was a lot of them. They used to get called back by a bugle, I believe. Yeah. Oh. But it was, it was. Sometimes we'd hide from them, and then uh, another day they'd play football with us. But you know they're okay. Yeah. And then we got a ball kicked up a tree one day, and tells us that happened. The bugle went, and of course, okay, off we go. But one come back another day and <laughs> climbed the tree, and got it down again. It's a day I got in my head, it's a wonderful day. I mean, I was 15, and um, up the town, everybody was celebrating, you know, you can't imagine what it was like. So we all walked up the town, and no buses or taxis or cars or anything. It was about four or five miles up the town, and the whole town was packed with all the foreign people, all the pilots from all of the planet, all the countries, you know. And there, and there was nobody drunk. Everybody was hugging each other, and... It was a wonderful, I'll never forget it, it was wonderful. Yeah. But it's the only time in my life that my mum hit me. <laughs> because we got the town, and it was about half past two, and I said to Fred, we better go home, you know. And um, I came down the road, and I thought, I'll take my shoes off, and mum can't be me going in. Mm. Well, the stairs went up by the front door, yeah. and as I went in the front door, she came. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get your dad on compassionate leave. <laughs> but it was a wonderful night that was. Yeah. yeah. Any bit that was said. It was worth it. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. There was singing and dancing.
When we were in Ireland, we biked it everywhere. We, yeah. There was no very little cars and that. It was all bikes. Yeah. So we were very fit, you know. Yeah. Well, I think we were. And <laughs> we cycled to, to the dances and everything. And yeah. cycled home yeah. again. What yes. was your first song? Hey? What was the song which you danced to? Do you remember the, the song? Um, it was mostly waltzes and that. We'd done, and then we had done the rock and roll. That was mm-hmm. at the time of the rock and roll in the 50s. Mm-hmm. So we loved our rock and roll. Oh, yeah. Bill Haley and, and the Common Star was yeah, good yeah. for the rock, rock and around roll. The clock. Rock around the clock. Yeah. Yes, yeah. all that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. And I, I was 21. We didn't have a telly. Yeah. And uh, we didn't have a telly. And we had what they call a tilly lamp. It's a lamp and it, it, it's hard to explain. It was like a net curtain, the globe they used to call it. And you had to light it gently and then pump the oil into it. But it was a good lamp, but as soon as you touch that little, uh, I can't explain what it was like. It was like knit curtain in, in a round, and if you touch that, it break and you had no light. Oh, and that, really, yeah. yeah. Well, when we left Desborough, we went into a house that had no electricity, it had no indoor plumbing, no indoor water. That's the sort of place we went. And then we moved on to exactly the same situation. And it, uh, that went on until about, we left in 53 and they were just putting water mains in our lane then. But otherwise, I think we had to pay for the electric to be built in. I think uh, the landlord said, uh, if you pay to have the cable put to your house, I'll pay to have it rewired and it cost about £14.50 to cross the road in them days. What it would cost now, I don't know. Yeah. We were all very happy. Yeah. Um, yeah, not a lot of um, mod cons, but we were all happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, the water and we were all very clean as well. Yeah. We and were wa- scrubbed well. The water came from, from, from the wells, and there was a pump along the road sometimes, you know. Yeah, it's a good... And then eventually they got... Um, the water was moved in. There was a tap in the front, you know. And, uh, Once the British left... Sri Lanka, uh, independence was declared and the majority were Sinhalese. Now my race, I'm a burger, which is, it traces back to European blood, if you like, in that case. And uh, the Sinhalese got the power and they thought, right, the burgers have had help from the British all these hundreds of years. Now it's our turn. And the things were, got difficult, in other words, you had a good education, you wanted to go and get a job, but there was a Sinhalese man behind, in front of you, or behind you, he hadn't your, uh, what do you call it, uh, your qualifications, mm-hmm. but he still got the job. Yeah. And you were a Christian, and it's a Buddhist country, mm-hmm. and little by little you were sort of discriminated against. So that's, we decided, sell up. But we were only allowed to have 150 pounds cash out. So if you had property, which we had, you know, you sell up or you pass it to some relation. Yeah. Wow. And scarper. Because the man I married came from Durham. Did he? Durham? Yeah. So my, nan, my nan and her family lived up in Durham. Yeah. But I mean, it was a real shock for me because coming from Devon, um, there was only little pubs with sawdust still on the ground, you know, and the men went in for a pint and a game of darts, and then they went home and said, night, everybody. But in D- D- Durham, it's not like that. Mm-hmm. They had to crawl out of the pubs, you know, and I, I couldn't come to terms with it. Yeah. They treated each other awful up there. Mm-hmm. You know, it was really bad. So I had a nervous breakdown up there, so we had to come down here. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it was a case of... Um, we got on all right, but because I kept, grew up in a very quiet, with a good parents and everything, and he grew up in a big family, and it's a lot of cruelty. Yeah. And even to this day, I think children up to their five—that's what you're doing to them. Yeah, yeah. Basically, inside of them. Yeah. It doesn't show properly, but it does make them. Yeah. The shipyards are closed. Okay, yeah. And our thousands came over the Highlands, the Scotland, every thousands came here. But they get, they, we stayed behind, the women stayed behind, and the men came down for three months. Yeah. In the meantime, they paid for it, they gave us a hundred pounds. And uh, 
They took all our belongings down and they gave us a house. Ah, okay, yeah. And I've been there in Corby for 15 years yeah. and I've had a good life. Yeah. We came back to Corby because yeah. Charlie applied for jobs and got the job in Corby. Yeah. And that's why we came back yeah. here. Yeah. We tried, tried to get back to Scotland, but they're very parochial in Scotland in the teaching profession. If you leave them, they're a wee bit parochial, but you're right, just see. coming back, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we had to go where the jobs were. Yeah. But this was called Little Scotland. Yeah, was yeah? it? Yeah, uh-huh. Corby, Corby uh-huh. Because ah. it was full of Scots. We couldn't believe it when we came here. Yeah. Everywhere you went, there was Scottish accents, you know. Yeah. It was That's because funny. of the steelworks. Yeah coming down from Glasgow yeah. to Corby. In fact, my husband, before he went into teaching, worked in the steelworks in the office, and um, he was offered to come down to Corby to move then. That was, well, a bit, I can't remember the exact year, but um, he said no, he'd just been accepted to do teacher training. Yeah. Otherwise, he'd have been in Corby. I had a cousin. Uh, who lived in Turnpike Lane. Yeah. And I went, uh, I met a chap, actually, we came home on holidays to Ireland, and he asked me to come back to England and he'd get me a job. And I worked in Hoover's, in Perryvale. Yeah. I worked there for four years and that. And then, you know, that always doesn't work out. So another four girls said, we we'll get you a, a place. So they got me a house to live in. And I moved into the house before... The people who owned the house did moved in, and it was Bridie and Dan McAvoy, and they, Dan came from Kilkenny, and he was such a nice man. I mean, they were really good to me. They really was. They treated me like one of their own. Yeah. And he had a brother who was a priest, and when they came over to England one year, I thought I shouldn't be down there. Dan said, "No, no, you come down and you talk to me." He said. The wages were little compared. To and Donald here, he went into, he built the car park in Livingston, which is a huge shopping centre now. Yeah. When we when we left to come back here, there was only about Wilco and Co-op, Super Co-op. That was the two main shops in it. Yeah. It's huge. It's like Milton Keynes. Oh, wow. I was up there a few years ago. Yeah. I miss, I, I, I don't think I miss much. I like yeah. The accommodation we had wasn't very good. We were looking for something better. And there was placards up on these large room, large houses that had rooms to let. And the signs on the wall says, rooms to let, no pets, no blacks, no dogs, no paddies. So all those people, the paddies were at the bottom of the list. So we weren't allowed there. And that's, I mean, I couldn't recommend anybody to come to my 17-year-old self's life anywhere in the, any country apart from England. And to be honest, it's, things have changed massively. And, and then, say about the science, did, did, you, did, did you experience uh, open hostility then, then quite, quite regularly when... When you were in England, when you were younger? Strangely enough, no, because, uh, uh, you know, you've probably noticed I talk a lot. I could talk my way into hell and out again, I think. <laughs> so uh, if there was ever a sort of a, a row brewing or anything like that, I would be acting as the peacemaker. And uh, I very seldom got into any real bother. And uh, it's just, I learned at, at a very young age to turn the other cheek, as it were. So uh, I didn't experience any brutality or any, any uh, things like that. But uh, I knew this sort of thing did happen. I mean, the, the, they all sort of get, got into uh, little ghettos all over the place. I mean, if you went to a town, you had a West Indian area, you would have an Asian area, and you had an Irish area, and so on. I don't know. I wanted to go to Australia, but I got talked out of it, so... Probably I could have gone there. My cousin went, but she, her husband couldn't settle, so she had to come back. But yeah. she liked it, you see. At that time, you could go for uh, fifteen pounds. Yeah. But you had to stay two years. Yeah. But I know I got talked out of that. I got talked out of a motorbike, of course. You know, yeah, you know folks are like. <laughs> Whoever told you? 
had my son and my first, my 23rd birthday. Yeah. And he we came down here three weeks before he was born. Okay, yeah, yeah. So. And what did you think when you, when you came here, when you were 23? I loved it. Did you? I loved the market. Yeah. <laughs> Especially on a Friday when they sell the cheap shoes, just piled them all on the, yeah. all on the, the table. You got yeah. your buttons off your coat. You were holding on to one and some, somebody across the table was holding on to the other. <laughs> <laughs> I used to send them up to my brother's family. Um, like my brother, eight kid, little kids, you know. Yeah. I was a seven, I just had my first. Frankie had three or two at the time. So I sent, sent them up yeah. to him. Yeah. So did, did your brother stay in Scotland then? Your brother stayed there and you... My brother came down here, I brought them all. Well, we lived in London, myself and the wife, and we had a young girl, my daughter. She was born in London in uh, 1964. She was born in Lewisham Hospital. And we were in rooms and... Uh, London County Council come up with an idea about uh, housing people in uh, new towns, as they call them. So they got in touch with a lot of towns all over the country and they offered to build houses in these towns and uh, factories for people to work in and they should uh, apply to go on there if they were on the housing list in London. It was their way of getting rid of the millions of people that were looking for houses in London. So we came to Wellingborough into a new house and it was like heaven. We had uh, three rooms, we had a living room, we had a kitchen, a separate kitchen with a sliding door and a dining room and we had a downstairs toilet, we had an upstairs bathroom. I, I started work when I was 15 and mm -hmm. I was, went into a shoe factory in yeah. Corby. <laughs> what type of shoes were you making? Men's shoes. Yeah. Yeah, John White's shoe factory. Yeah. yeah. And, and I've worked in the shoe factory all my life till I retired. Did you? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and so you're still working now? Yes, I, I work three mornings a week. It, it's the summer I go at six o'clock. I mean, the wind is darker, so about seven, eight o'clock. I pick. I'm a picker. Yeah. So I've gone from there to here, wherever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Uh, work is work, and it's it's you know if it's if you're interested in it. Yeah. And there's a little factory I do, office cleaning and the <coughs> the offices. Once a week, uh, you go and sit there. And when I finish, I sit there and read the paper until it gets brighter, and then I go and do the picking. So I enjoy myself. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm happy. I stayed there and then um, when I was about 18 I got a bit restless. So a friend and I we wanted to go in the WAFs because the war was tearing off then. Yeah. And um, we didn't know whether we'd like it so we said we'll try the NAFI and if we like that then we can join the... <laughs> so we joined the NAFI. I was in that for about three years. Yeah. Yeah. It's called uh, Corby Little Scotland, yeah, and yeah. it was all Scottish people that was there at the time, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, what, what, did, you, did you take up any work roles around? around yeah, the, I worked for the steelworks for 18 and a half years. Wow, all okay. different jobs, different kids, different jobs, yeah, you know, yeah. I had five kids. <laughs> wow. well, what, 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 what sort of things did you have to do in the steelworks then? Eh? What, what sort of things did you have to do in the steelworks? Well, I worked in one of the, the young uh, apprentices. Yeah. You know, what night they in their trays and I served in the, served in the shop in yeah. there. And uh, I did cleaning at night when another had child came along. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I was in the kitchen cooking and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, jobs, I've had factory, but always wanted to nurse. But by the time I got started getting to all levels, you needed four. Mm -hmm. You only needed two at one thing. Yeah. Well, I got my two, but you needed four, so age was going against me. So I never got, but I did. I worked with, when the work shut down, 
don't know how he's done this year. I thought, I'm not going to watch. Well, he's got all that money, he'll be drunk every day. <laughs> so he's a Scotsman. So I decided to pack in as well. Yeah. And I wrote out his social services because I used to do um, first aid. Yeah. So I wrote out his social services and I got a job voluntary at Stonehouse Day Centre. And from there I got a job in the college four days a week and one day at Stonehouse. And then from there I went on to uh, orthopedics and kitchen general. Yeah. And that's my job, and the rest was just factory work, as you see. Yeah. Well, um, I've always liked um, maths, sums and all that. I was yeah. really quite brilliant. I didn't know why, but I loved it, yeah. Yeah. But then when I left school and I thought, I was 14, leave school at 14 then. Yeah. And um, I thought, I didn't want to go in the factory. I thought, I'm not going in the factory. And so they applied for this job. And um, whether they liked me or not, I don't know. But they accepted, he said, we'll give you a trial. Yeah. And so at 14, I was working in an office. By the time I was 17, I was a pay clerk to the whole factory. Wow. And that's in the days when there were no machines. It was yeah. all, wow. everything we had. Yeah, and I loved it. Yeah, the, the man from the tax office used to come over, you know, and he used to say, if you'd have been a buy, that's what they say in Devon, he said, you would not be sitting there now, you'd be in my office. You know, right. but I just like maths. Everybody's, yeah. everybody's got something, isn't they? Yeah. You know. In Ireland, uh, we had a great life, really good life. I worked in an old folks' place, uh, looking after old folk. And we were at split shifts. And we started at six o'clock, finished at two, then we were off for two hours and go back in the evening to do that tea. Yeah. Then we finished at eight o'clock and then we were out dancing nearly every night. So we... We didn't mind looking after the old folk because we had a great social life. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and now you've I was in the, I was in the army for six years. Uh huh. And I uh, had a good life in there. It was very yeah. good. In plenty of training and what have you, but uh, it was good and uh, I was enjoyed it, like, you know. Because I was, at that time when you're young, like, you know, it was a really good time, yes. Yeah. About yeah. 22. I'd imagine now ladies. Catholic Church occupation road. Yeah. And uh, went away to Jersey. First time I'd ever been on a plane, went to Jersey. Yeah. Everybody, all my friends thought we were rich because we went on a plane. <laughs> Little did they know we only could, you could take £65 on the plane in them days. Yeah. You could take it out of the country. And what, was it, what was it like um, going on the plane for the first time? I was time? sick as a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and you're only on it because I've been back to Jersey a couple of times since. Mm -hmm. You're only on it about just over an hour, if that. Yeah, yeah. And the, uh, so we do. My son was in. The, my husband was in the army. We've been to Hong Kong, Thailand, Singapore, wow. Dubai. Yeah. In fact, my granddaughter came last week. She said, "Now, how many places have you been?" And I've been to thirty different countries. Wow. <laughs> so was he stationed in those countries? So yeah, he had two well, years well. in Hong Kong. Wow, yeah. And then when we went to Kettering to live, we both, he, we went to work in Weetabix. Yeah. At Burton Latimer. Yeah. I'd done eight years, my husband done 16 years. And uh, I think my son done about a year. And, yeah, I've had a good life. Yeah. You know. Well, I wouldn't know what it's like because I was only in the steelworks for about 10 or 11 months, but uh, we had half a dozen people worked in the plant I was in. One chap was English, and he was the brains of the department. He knew what, he could recognise all the different alloys, all the different metals, and when he got an order in for a particular metal, he would uh, have it all cut to size and sent up to be processed. And just put it at the back of the furnace in lines, and somebody would roll it up, put it on a lift, put it into the back of the furnace, and the furnace heated it, and it rolled straight to the front, and you got a great big long, well, I don't know, it was a steel rod, and you, you pulled it towards you, you opened the door, and you grabbed it when it come down on a cradle, and swung it down to the conveyor belt, 
and the fella on the other side would push a button and the ramrod would go through it, pushing the metal straight out to create the tube. And then his friend would stand there and he'd pull another two levers and cut either end of it off because both they stayed solid. They weren't tubular. Yeah. And then we'd pick up the odd bits, throw them in a tin bucket with, with tongs and put the, the tubes on a trolley. And that was, that was the process for making steel tubes. Yeah. And I think it's still employed now because this is Corby. And the steel works from Scotland came down here and they're making tubes here in Corby now. Yeah. And where did, where did you meet your husband? At a dance. <laughs> a dance. <laughs> how, 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 how did you meet him like when you were 15 going to the dances or did you? Well, people kept saying that he wanted to go out with me, kind of yeah. thing, you know, and I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I went out with him when I was 16. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And what, what was the first dance you danced to? What was the first song? Well, my husband wasn't very good at me at dancing. Um, it was a slow dance, I suppose. We yeah. didn't jive in that. My husband uh, then got burnt. His legs got burnt and he got taped to up Mandeville. Mm -hmm. And they found out he had muscular dystrophy. Yeah, yeah. This was before I was married. Yeah. yeah. I was hooked and muscular. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so he ended up, I looked after him. He was in a wheelchair for 40 odd years, you know. Wow. Yeah. And then the last 10 years of his life, he was had a tracheostomy and he was ventilated at home. Yeah. yeah but we yeah. had two carers 24 hours a day looking after him. Wow. Got yeah, yeah. And, uh, but they didn't have big marriages. You get married on a Friday night in the register office and that was it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you were quite well off, you get married. And my brother got married in the lawn and that was a big fancy place in Greenwood. It was very nice. You couldn't sing. You couldn't do nothing. You just sat there. I thought it was a funeral over there. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we're here 63 years now. Yeah. Yeah. How long had you known each other prior? We just met in February and we married in December. In December. We had a whirlwind romance. Yes. Very <laughs> exciting. They're always the best ones, aren't they? <laughs> And what, what brought you over here? So I what, came over to go nursing. Yeah. But then John followed me and uh, I'm nursing babies yeah. ever since. Not Didn't never go in nursing because we got married in December. Yeah. And we've got five daughters. Mm -hmm. Wow. From 60 down to 50 this year, the oh, girls. Wow. Hey, I met them in the dance and well... This big girl said to me, I was like that. Yeah. And she was, Reba was like that. And she said to me, you keep your eyes off my boyfriend. I said, says who? And that's the only time I went there, I didn't explain to me. <laughs> <laughs> I just went there and first played. <laughs> 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 but as time went on, I really liked it. <laughs> We've all celebrated our 80s. And I would have been married, um, I got married in 1960. Would have. Pat's been dead five years. The queerest thing was, my husband was called Pat as well. <laughs> and the neighbours used to say, where's Mr Pat? I bet he's in the garage. I said, yeah, well, he loves being in there because he could do anything. He likes cars. So I really have a good life. And how did, how did you meet your husband? At the, the Raven Hotel. He used to have dances in the hall there. Yeah. But I knew him through school because in the boys' school, in the girls' school, my husband was born in Weldon Road, down the old village. And his, grand, his dad came from Gerrington. And his nan had a farm at one time. But I've known him all. I've known him since we were kids. Yeah. And then, and then what happened? And then, uh, yeah, I had already met Mary. I had married and divorced within three years, less than that. 
That's life. Yeah. <laughs> she left me for an old boy, but then no mind. But the best thing that happened was when I met Mary. Yeah. Uh, my best man from the first wedding invited me. He said, "Come on, Bill. We're having a, a Sudanese dance, Sri Lankan dance, and that's mostly Sri Lankans, but everyone was invited." And mm -hmm. and uh, I was just out of hospital and I didn't want to go. And, uh, divorce and feeling down. Yeah. But I went. And thank God I did. I met Mary. Yeah. And we that's then we were together in, not together, she lived in uh Acton or some place around there. Hoover, she used to work for Hoover's and I was I used to work in North London, so we were apart but we met in weekends. And uh I said to her, Mary, I got a chance now for promotion, etc. Climb the ladder going up to Corby. She said, where's Corby? I said, I don't know. We're going. <laughs> uh, I said, the coach is, we're taking the coach up with the firm mm -hmm. to come and come to Corby, have a check, look at the place and all that. She came, but she didn't want to, to come to Corby. I said, well, I'm afraid it's a bit, uh, might sound terrible. I said, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, that's my career. I'm going up. If you want to join me, join us and we'll see how it goes. And she did. And yeah. She knew what was good for her. <laughs> but she, you know, she, although she's Irish and all that, she, she loved London, working for Hoover's. But she did. And we married in 72. First child, 73. Second one, 77. That's... Yeah. Well, we went to uh, the seaside resort. It's called Port Rush. And I worked in a hotel in Port Rush, the Northern Counties Hotel. They called it the Northern Counties because that was the name of the railway. The Northern Counties, they owned the hotel. And uh, she was working there and I was working as a chef. And we got to know each other. We started going out. And then uh, we split up for a little while when I come over to England on my own. And we went back. We got back together again. And uh, we, we come over back to England and we got married. And that was in 1964. 57 years ago, and we're still married. Yeah. But he stated it nicely when they took him shooting and hunting. And you know what they like in Ireland, they play jokes. And my brother said, oh, there's a bull in that field in there. So they said, when we say run, you run. So Bill had big wellies on, he wasn't used to that sort of life. And then he, um, somebody said, the bull's coming. And they all ran. Bill was all fussed over the fence, and oh. way, way down, and they were killing themselves laughing. And, uh, going, yeah. But one, I had to laugh at this particular day. Year seven, since I was a boy, and they were, we had biometric fingerprints, you see, and his name was James McCafferty. Well, McCafferty was my name yeah. before I got married. And I said to him, well, James, there's one thing I'll never forget, because that used to be my name. And the boy standing next to him said, oh, what? You used to be called James. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it'll be good around the school that I've had a sex change. Yeah. <laughs> oh, some of the things you, the kids come out with are yeah, magic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the very first book I wrote was, first poem I wrote was before I went into writing. I wrote in their daily record to it, The Ragman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can see that up by heart. Can oh. you? Do you, want, would you, would you would want me to see that? Yeah, yeah would you? The Ragman comes down our street. He blows a pumpkin, no notes, just a bleep. A woolly cardigan or a cat, a jumper he cries from his lorry as he passes by. Windmills, balloons, and candy bars. Come on, give the kids a treat. Our Rosie's dress looks neat when playing housewives in the street. But I think it's seen its day, so to the ragman I'll give it away. Oh God, our Rosie's looking at the window. Oh Lord, she's kicking up a shindy. I think I better run so far so I can eat my candy bar. Great. <laughs> Excellent. That's great. What I heard one once, I think it was a, it was a Jewish couple. And he said, uh, he asked her if she could, if I could have a date. He said, uh, what was it now? Um, wait a minute. 
So, oh yeah, she said, it was Friday night, she said, no, I'm going to top myself. He says, oh, oh. Uh, Saturday at the window. <laughs> <laughs> Now. I feel as if uh, I'm on another planet with computers and uh, all different phones. It took me a long time to do that phone, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah and things like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's changed very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if I've, everything's changing, changing, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sure, sure. Well, technology its left me behind. It's my fault. I, I was at the stage where I didn't want to learn more. Mm, yeah. I mean, I, when I did wages and salaries, we had a very old type of uh, system, a serious, S-I-R-I-U-S, uh, computer, and the girls used to put it through the, through the wages. And uh, I was involved with that sort of thing, but when I was made redundant after 23 years at Curry and Paxton, I went into driving Littlewoods uh, home delivery parcels, mm -hmm. and uh, that didn't have technology. That probably we had only tickets. The yeah. customer signed the ticket that they yeah, got the yeah. thing, official tickets. So after about 15 years there, and I retired at 65. That was what 16 years ago. Technology was taken off, mm -hmm. and I wasn't. I didn't go with it. I didn't go yeah, with the floor. Yeah. Like I say to people like and the four girls, um, and they come up to school and I say, What's wrong with your face then? It was upset you, you know. And you the children come in automatically to you and you start talking, getting the dinner ready, whatever. Mm -hmm. But now they come in and go upstairs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's a it's not it doesn't help. No. No. Because if they've got a problem it's gonna get worse and worse sitting in stair upstairs on their own. Yeah. That's they it. don't connect do they? Yeah. yeah. Uh, We'll see what we can do. <laughs> <laughs> it's all up to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, all right, well, thank you. Well, that, yeah. will, that will never happen, will it? Yeah. Well, I don't yeah. think. You never know. It might come full circle. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to go right back, though. Yeah. Not to yeah. the oil lamps. Yeah, yeah. Some, sometimes, if I'm walking up to the shop in the morning and get a paper and that, I might meet a young mother coming down and she'd have one in the pram and one behind her. And she's looking at her phone. Yeah. yeah. She's not paying any attention to the little one that's behind. And that yeah. little one could yeah. uh, give you a hat and could run straight out onto the road, like, you know. You've got respect. My mother used to be at work and she said, if I'm not in, go to Mrs. Fiddy's next door and she'll give you a piece of jam and a, and a drink of water. Mm. You know, could you imagine doing that now? They'd want a fiver to go to McDonald's. Yeah, I took my true. grandson to McDonald's yesterday at 10. He said, what do you want, Nan? I said, oh, I love them things that are like chicken five or something. And so he was doing it on that machine. Yeah. And I kept going. And it cost me £15. He, was, he cut what, um, hot sauce. And I thought you were getting that. But when I got the bill, that was one pound nearly. Yeah. It took two of them. Things like that. You know, money's... Yeah, they've got no... They've got no... Um, Thought about the money or nothing. Yeah. I mean, men used to be able to walk in a pub. A woman couldn't walk in a pub on her own, could she? Really? Really? I mean, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Not a man. A woman couldn't have walked in her own. Oh, no. You on your own? Really? No. You, well, you didn't go to many pubs unless you were with a husband or, you know. Right. Yeah, it was all men and they couldn't have, No. Yeah. Saturday night. And this young West Indian chap said, Brian, you get all dressed up on a Sunday, Saturday night. Where do you go? I said, I go to Mass. He says, what is that? And I told him. He says, is that good? And I said, well, it's good for me. He says, could I come? And I didn't know what that meant at that time. I didn't know whether he was going, asking if he was, you know, eligible to come or whatever. But what it was, it was, he was a black fella and he didn't know if he would be allowed in. I didn't know that until a little bit later. We went to Mass and we came out. And I was used to going into an Italian restaurant on the way up for a breakfast. 
and they knew me just to walk in and said hello, Brian, when I walked in the door. And he says, will I come to Mass with you? I said, yeah, definitely. And he come to Mass and he said, coming up, and I said, I'm going in here for something to eat. He says, I'll see you back at the house. I said, well, if you push for money, I said, I'll buy you breakfast. Come in, have your breakfast. He said, no, no, I won't come. And I had to force him to come in. He said, well, I'll do it to please you. So we opened the door, and the manager of the restaurant met me at the door, and he says, we'll have you in here. He said, but we won't have him. So that was the reason he was asking if he was eligible to go to Mass, because some places he wasn't accepted. He wouldn't accept because of colour of his skin. And that was the first time I recognised racial prejudice. A lot of changes, definitely. Um, it's probably... I don't think people are as friendly and sociable as we... You know, they don't mix as much uh, households mm -hmm. like we did. Um, you know... Like with your neighbours and stuff yeah, like Yeah, yeah. But I think Corby's good for that. That's one good thing here. There's a great community spirit here. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, when we all came here with no family here. Well, I had my sister like, but most of us came with no parents or anything like that. So we had to make our own life here. Yeah, yeah. And it was more or less, you, you had to go out and make friends. They didn't come into you. Yeah. You, had, you made friends at the schools and all that. You met mm -hmm. people when your children started school. Yeah. But um, I suppose being able to make friends and that and be sociable. Yeah. That's it. Mm. And be kind to people. That's important. Yeah. Well, I've been friends for 60 years, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We meet up and go for a coffee, or, you know. Yeah, that's Yeah, and then when my husband got really bad, what you call it, that's when I joined, um, that was 15, 14 years ago, I joined the Young Art Club. Yeah. And uh, I used to come up here and then the carers look after him, you know. Yeah. And then I also was a volunteer for the Lakelands Hospice. Oh, okay, yeah. I've done yeah. that for... Well, I'm still doing it, I haven't been, because they've been closed. Yeah. 16 years I was a volunteer. Wow. Used to go and make teas and coffees every Thursday morning. Yeah. Hoping to do it in September. Yeah. And then I'd done all the craft work. Oh, done wow. the craft stalls. And did you? I did. It's a what 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 How you been coming here? Uh, no, I usually go um, dancing on a Monday and a Friday and a Wednesday and then everything was shut down and my daughter, she's a hairdresser at the Autumn Centre and um, she said, try to, because she kept saying, you've got to go out, mum, you've got to go out, you know, because I was so fed up. Yeah. I kept saying, yeah. she said, what do you want? I said, somebody to talk to. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so all I want, somebody to talk to. Yeah. And, um, so she tried the Irish centre, she said, just don't in. And luckily, that week, they just said, don't bring any more friends. Yeah. So I was lucky. Yeah. So you're yeah. Yeah. Yes. You're a VIP. Yeah, I made it, I made it. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Well. Oh, just friends, you know, just saying, come along, you know. That, that was all, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. I like, cause I, and I do aqua aerobics three times a week. Do you? Yeah. It's quite hard, actually. It is, it is. Oh, sometimes I can hardly move. When I was 65, that's 16 years ago, uh, when I retired, I, I got two little part-time jobs to keep me going. I can't, can't sit in the house watching telly. And I haven't many uh, hobbies other than sport. And I still could play sport at that age, really. But uh, Mary being Irish, and we came to the Irish club and joined the Irish club itself. <coughs> in fact, we were members of the Irish club years before. And someone in the club said, Bill, why don't you join us at the Young at Heart now that you're retired and all that? So I came and joined it. Mary still works, so we, we managed to fit it in. But I started here and we had a... The people in charge, and obviously we always get critics and uh, they were doing it their way and we didn't, some of us didn't like it. Then we eventually didn't have a rebellion or a revolt or anything like that, mm -hmm. but we, when an AGM comes and you put your name up, if you're popular, you win it. Yeah, yeah. Democracy. Uh, we come back to Cor uh, Cor we come back to Corbyn in '65. All oh, right. So and, and, and where where did you used to frequent, and what was the type of music that you used to uh, listen to? Just to pop in that now and again. 
because I had three youngsters, you know, mm. so they take up a bit of time. I yeah. see them in now and again, but most of the time I spent with the, the kids, you know. Yeah. Uh, nothing outstanding, but as long yeah. as they were happy, you know. We'd sort of have a day out rather than wallpaper a room, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> we thought they'd re remember a day out more than watching us paper a room like. But otherwise, yeah. I think they've grown up all right. They still talk to us. <laughs> That's a good sign. <laughs> um, Corby was, I mean, Corby is a, a great friendly place. Yeah. That used to be a lot, you used to, well, you used to know everybody. Mm. Yeah. You know, I mean, even now I've got a town, <laughs> Jimmy says, I'm going to take a packed lunch when he goes up the town with me. <laughs> Hiya! <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's all from all different places, you know, like from the dancing or from the school or from yeah. work. Or I go out with all the girls from work. Oh, that's changes. There's hardly any Scottish accents now <laughs> for a start because you could see it coming through the school. Yeah. You know, you could see all the wee children starting in year seven and there was a lot of Scottish accents. But as the years went on... That was all changing, you know, the accents were... So we've got a, lot of, got a lot of ladies out there, not so many men. <laughs> yes. Why do you think that is? Well, he reckons we killed them all off. <laughs> <laughs> He's the I lucky one. Wondering. He's the lucky one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, men, I think, sometimes die. They did use to, maybe not now, die younger than women, which is well known, isn't it? Yeah. Really, yeah. yeah. Well, we had a... Usually out a year we have a holiday, like, it's not yeah, around from the club or not. No. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, we organised the holidays as well for the we used to women, the yeah. coach, coach trips, you know. Yeah. And what yeah. trips did you used to go on? Where, where did you go? We went to all the seaside places. And we went to, uh, we had five days, you know, Monday to Friday holidays. Um, Didn't we you name it, we went there. Yeah. There's very few places we haven't been. We, well, went we went to Brighton Ireland, and, uh, we done the Ring of Kerry and all yeah, that. Yeah, and yeah, we went to awesome. Westport and Mayo as well. With the, with the club with we went club, to like, Westport. We went for seven, when we went there, we were seven days. And a lot of the people here, they were, you know, they'd never been to Ireland. They couldn't believe the hospitality. Yeah, they thought yeah. that the breakfast and all the food, they thought it was like a... A so like a banquet, they like said. a banquet every yeah, day. Yeah, it was lovely. Food was, uh, we were was, quite uh, pleased. Absolutely they were fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Westport was absolutely lovely as yeah. well. And they had yeah, a, it was lovely. There was great music on every night there. We danced well. every night. Great, it was fantastic. Like him, <laughs> <Jivic. laughs> what year was that? Oh, God, it's about 15 years ago. 15 years ago, Yeah, at least. 